So what exactly is a full frame camera? And do you need one for whatever content that you're making? So the shot on the left was done with a full frame camera and the shot on the right is done with a crop sensor camera, specifically an APS-C sensor camera. Now it looks like the one on the right might be zoomed in more than the one on the left, but they're both actually filmed at the same exact focal length. And now this shot here, the one on the left has a blurrier background and a more shallow depth of field than the one on the right, even though they're still at the same focal length and at the same aperture. So there you can see the two biggest differences between, you know, full frame and crop sensor cameras. But now let's kind of explain why, what's going on, why those differences are a thing, and which one you might actually want to go with. It all has to do with this thing right here, the sensor. It's basically the thing that captures the light that's coming from the lens and interprets it into an image. And the thing that makes this sensor a full frame sensor is the size of it. It's basically the same size of the old 35mm film that we used to shoot photos on back in the day before DSLRs were a thing. And that's different from crop sensor cameras like this APS-C sensor here, which has a smaller sensor meaning that it captures a smaller portion of the image circle that's coming out of your lens. So that's basically the only main difference, but it does drastically change the images that come out of your camera. Uh, here's what I mean. So let's take this picture right here at 50 millimeters at 4.5 on both the full frame camera and the crop sensor camera. And so there you can see that the crop sensor camera is literally just cropped in. That's why it's called crop sensor. So if we want to get it all framed up the same way, we could just zoom out on the crop sensor camera, of course, and uh, figure out how much we need to zoom out. Uh, we could just divide the 50 millimeters by 1.6, since that's the crop factor ratio on here. And you get about 31 millimeters, so that's what we'll shoot that at. So now they're framed up the same way, but the background on the full frame camera is a lot blurrier. So to compensate that also, we can go ahead and adjust the aperture on the crop sensor camera. To figure out by how much, we just use that same 1.6 crop factor. Since these were shot at 4.5, we can divide that by 1.6 and we get 2.8, which is the maximum aperture of the both of these lenses here. So now we have two basically the same looking shots with the same depth of field, same framing, but you can only go so far with compensating on the aperture like that. Like if I go ahead and open up the full frame camera all the way up to 2.8 and snap this shot here. And now that background is way blurrier than I can ever get on the crop sensor because I can't open up the aperture any more than it already is. So what I'm getting at here is if you want blurrier backgrounds, and I think most of us do, get a full frame camera. But still, there are some people that should actually use crop sensor cameras despite the depth of field advantages with full frame cameras. Like if you just want to take photos of your kids playing Little League Baseball, go for it. Go take a crop sensor camera, it'll be just fine. You don't need to spend the money on a full frame camera and you don't need the massive full frame lenses. Or if you're a traveling bird photographer or something, I mean, I don't know. You're gonna want both those smaller camera and lens packages that come with crop sensors. And you're also gonna want those tighter shots. Cause when you start using those extreme telephoto focal lengths, that crop factor just gets amplified. Like instead of shooting at 500 millimeters on your full frame camera to get that picture of that bird all the way over there, you can use your crop sensor camera to 500 divided by 1.6. You can use your crop sensor camera with like a 300 millimeter lens and get just about the same shot. Now we know that it's not the same shot because of what we talked about earlier, but I'd still rather use a 300 millimeter lens instead of a 500 millimeter lens. You know what I mean? But now for the rest of us, like 90% of other content creators that aren't taking bird pictures or kids baseball pictures, full frame is probably the way to go if we have the money to spend on it. Because most of what I shoot is people and things at like medium distances like this. And I might not always want to have a super blurry background, but I do want to have that option. And with full frame cameras, it's easier. And if you do end up getting a full frame camera, you'll probably end up with a more pro level camera anyways. And along with that comes stuff like, you know, better data rates, more dynamic range, faster frame rates, faster, you know, sh photo shoot speeds, just kind of better everything. Well, of course, I'm generalizing here. There are plenty of exceptions, especially with like the GH5 or the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Those are micro four thirds and they are awesome cameras despite not being full frame. Then on the flip side with crop sensor cameras, you get, you know, cheaper lenses, cheaper cameras altogether, smaller lenses and easier telephoto capabilities. 
So in the end, it is entirely up to whatever content you wanna make and what you wanna do with your personal situation. Personally, I love my full frame camera and I don't want to just preach at you guys to buy the same one or anything. I just want you guys to have informed buying decisions and do what's best for you. And with that, feel free to click on some of the other videos around here. My name is Ryan Michaels and I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.